Hi there. This is case 4 for the summer panoramic interpretation course. We are going to use one panoramic radiograph to review our knowledge of ameloblastoma. Before you start interpreting a panoramic radiograph, evaluate if the patient positioning is correct. Then review all the teeth. I know you will be tempted to look at the striking finding in the mandibular left posterior region. Still, I recommend that you follow the standard protocol. My protocol is to start from the area of number 1 going to number 16 and then 17 to the area of 32. After that, I'll come back to the area of this lesion. A patient may have more than one disease. As a clinician, we have to review the whole radiograph thoroughly and should not focus to an area of apparent interest. After we have reviewed all the teeth, the sinuses, the condyles, let's study this lesion here in the mandibular left molar region. The third molar is missing. The roots of the first and second molars are partially resorbed. We have a radiolucency which has multiple compartments. The inferior alveolar canal is not clearly visible. There is one lesion in the area of the first molar that appears more radiolucent than other areas. So this lesion may have perforated buccal or lingual cortical plates. These teeth are not displaced. The inferior border of the mandible is probably slightly affected. This radiopacity is the hyoid. I have a CBCT scan of the same patient. Let's review that. This is the mandibular CBCT scan of the same patient. And here is the lesion of our interest. This blue vertical line represents the image on this window. So let's look at this window coming from posterior. This is buccal cortical plate and that's the lingual cortical plate. And I'm going to scroll through the images. As I come mesially, you can see that the lingual cortical plate is expanded. This is the lesion and there's a very faint lingual cortical plate. Coming more mesially, you can see two compartments and then more compartments. There are some smaller compartments, some larger. So overall, the buccal cortex is a little better defined here and the lingual cortex is lost. And this is where we see the buccal cortex is lost and the lingual cortex is thin. So remember on the panoramic radiograph, we saw this area being very lucent and that's mainly because the buccal cortex as well as the lingual cortex are both thin or perforated. Looking on the axial slices, you can appreciate the multiple compartments. Let's go back to our panoramic radiograph. Coming back to the panoramic radiograph, we can see that this is the area of the amyloblastoma. Here is another example of an amyloblastoma, almost in the same region. In this case, you can see that the third molar is displaced distally. See the space between the roots of these two teeth. This lesion is also multilocular, extending from the alveolar crest to the inferior border of the mandible. In the region of the first molar, the inferior border of the mandible is thin. This lesion has separated the roots of the premolars. Most mesially, this lesion probably reaches the canine area. The inferior alveolar canal is probably displaced. This radiograph was shared with me by Dr. Raid Al Sadan, professor at the King Saud University in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. You can see multiple compartments. Several compartments here. This is probably a large compartment and this is a slightly smaller compartment and then small compartments in this region. In this large lesion, the third molar is displaced to the inferior border of the mandible. You can appreciate slight expansion of the inferior border of the mandible. Another finding that you see is the expansion of the anterior wall of the ramus. This lesion has almost reached the sigmoid notch. The roots of the first and second molars are probably resorbed. Amyloblastoma is an aggressive benign tumor. This tumor is locally invasive, destroying a large part of the jaws. It can be three types, unicystic, multicystic, and desmoplastic. The amyloblastoma is intraosseous. There is also a soft tissue variant of amyloblastoma. Also, there is a malignant variant. 
Amyloblastoma can happen in any age. Children as young as 3 or 4 years old or people in their 80s may develop amyloblastoma. However, the average is about 40 years. Amyloblastoma is more common in males in the United States. It is also more common in African Americans. This tumor grows slowly without any signs and symptoms in early stages. Therefore, it can become fairly large before it is detected. If untreated, amyloblastoma can become very large. Recurrence of amyloblastoma is high and higher in older patients. Although amyloblastoma can happen in any areas, the most common sites are molar ramus. I have shown you two panoramic radiographs with amyloblastoma in the molar region. In one panoramic radiograph, the amyloblastoma was in the ramus area. In the maxilla also, amyloblastoma is commonly in the molar region. The borders of amyloblastoma are well defined and corticated. There are multiple curved septa. Mostly, amyloblastoma is radiolucent, but there can be some radiopacity and gives a mixed appearance. The multicystic amyloblastoma, as the name suggests, has multiple compartments. Typically, such an appearance is called a soap bubble appearance. In two of our cases, we saw moderate tooth displacement. In another radiograph, we saw significant displacement of the molar to the inferior border of the mandible. We also saw some root resorption. As the tumor grows, the cortical plates are expanded and may become perforated, and this is something that we saw on the CBCT scan. Unicystic amyloblastoma may look like a dentigerous cyst. Therefore, it's important that you do a histopathological examination of any lesion that looks like a dentigerous cyst. Remember that unicystic amyloblastoma may arise from the walls of a dentigerous cyst. Odontogenic keratocysts may also have multilocular appearance and may look like an amyloblastoma. Other multilocular lesions such as giant cell granuloma or odontogenic myxoma should be considered in the differential diagnosis. Amyloblastoma requires thorough imaging study using CBCT, CT, and MRI. An MRI is needed to rule out soft tissue invasion by the tumor. A small amyloblastoma may be removed intraorally. Larger lesions require surgical resection of the jaws. In cases where surgery is difficult, radiation therapy may be needed. Because of the high recurrence rate, please plan on follow-up studies. Let's stop here with our analysis of amyloblastoma. Dhanabad, Kushraho, thank you. Please come back again for another panoramic interpretation video. See you soon.